Hi, in this video I'm gonna show you how to create a watercolor artwork like this starting from this photo without spending hours and hours in Photoshop. The whole process took around 45 minutes and I used the watercolor artist plugin to make the base and then made a quick editing using various techniques. Techniques that are all very simple and we will see them later in the video. Watercolor artist is an action set for Photoshop that I made some time ago for Adobe and it's free on the Creative Cloud website. People are liking it very much. I received many messages and some sent me their artworks asking for suggestions and it was very nice to talk with them. I'm glad about that so I decided to make this video. Uh, I'll leave the link to the Adobe website down in the description. And here at the beginning of the page you'll see that there are two download links. The action set has been updated for the latest Photoshop 22 release and this is it, the first link, while the other one is for all the previous versions of Photoshop CC. So be careful here on which one you are downloading. Then down here you'll find some preview images and also a full video tutorial that shows how to install the action set and how to quickly customize the result. So in this video I won't be explaining each step that I'm doing but it will be a speeded up screen capture of the process used to create this image and I'll describe maybe a little bit more in detail just the techniques that are not covered in the video tutorial. So let's get started. So I started by choosing a free image on pixabay.com and since spring is at the door, I'll go with this nice cherry blossom picture. I'll leave the link to this image and few other links down in the description. So the action set is already installed and in this first step I'm just painting over the area that will be later rendered in watercolor. There's no need to be much precise while doing this, the only thing is to fill up well the area without leaving too many holes or small empty spots inside of it. Once the area is drawn, I run the action and it starts to process the image automatically. It took a little more than 2 minutes for this image, so I'm gonna skip right to the end of the playback. Here we have the result and now I start editing it. And at the beginning I'll be just showing and hiding layers just to see what each layer does and choosing what I want to use in my image. Yeah, watercolor artists come with a set of custom brushes and the action uses some of them while it's processing the image but they can be used also later during the editing. So here I'm using the wet brush to hide some of these splashes here. They are nice but they are a little bit too chaotic for this image. All the brushes and textures that you will see here are handmade. They were drawn on paper then photographed and turned into Photoshop brushes and patterns. And here I'm just hiding and unhiding layers. The action has generated many different brush strokes and textures and you can select which one to use, the ones that fits better with your image. I want to keep just a few selected number of these strokes to keep the image clean. Now with this base I start working on the details. The violet group named image control will let you quickly equalize the outcome of the action. Right after the playback of the action you could also go straight to this folder and edit these layers to quickly balance the image.
here I'm continuing to add more details. Now I start creating a text for the image. I want to make it look like a watercolor text and I do it by using a combination of layer styles. And it's a very simple combination of just three styles. It could be done a lot better but I wanted to keep this simple and quick and for this small text here it's gonna be okay anyways. In the pattern overlay style I use one of the watercolor patterns that comes with the action set and then I add an inner glow and an inner shadow. Now I want to create a sky for the background and I use a watercolor texture that I have in my asset folder. I made several textures similar to this one. They are really easy to make with some paper, a cheap watercolor set and a camera or a scanner. On Pixabay or Pexels you'll find similar images to this one for free by just searching watercolor texture. It's not even necessary to use a texture here. This layer could be also drawn using the brushes of the watercolor artist set. I realized that I don't like the result very much, so I start searching for a photo to use in the background. I decide also that I want this picture to be a square portrait, so I crop the image using the crop tool. I end up totally blurring the photo and, and it becomes just a barely visible gradient. I also replace that texture with a pattern that comes with the action set. I adjust a bit the composition and I start cleaning up a bit this barely visible sky. Here I made a small break and I didn't record a small part. Basically I used some of the watercolor brushes and painted over the layer custom watercolor in the violet group to add some more brush strokes to the background. Next, I want to add a little bit more contrast to this image. Not to the whole image but just some parts of it to make them pop out more. So I'm using the dodge and burn technique which basically consists in setting the blending mode of a layer to soft light and then painting over the image with both bright and dark colors. This way I can add some highlights on the edge of the flower and some shadow in the center. And last thing here, the signature. And that's all for this video, thank you all for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you like the stuff that I create in Photoshop and let me know down in the comment section if you like this kind of video and if you want to see more like this. See you in the next video.